Okay, I'm going to review George's first solo album, All Things Must Pass, from 1970. Uh, he was the quickest off the blocks in terms of solo career, massive number one hit, outsold the first albums from John, Ringo and Paul from the same year, both commercially and critically for the most part, I think it got it was better received, although John's album was critically very well received, it didn't sell that well. This was huge and it contained a huge number one single in My Sweet Lord. Um, so, you know, other people have said, um, some people have said over the years that he put all his eggs in one basket and so he struggled to follow it up and uh, the other Beatles were there was a lot of bad feeling among the Beatles at the time, and so John saw this cover and says, George looks like a gnome on the cover. What's he doing? What's he thinking? Uh, I don't think Paul came out at the time saying, it, saying anything particularly positive about this album, although, interestingly, at the concert for George in 2002, a year after George's passing, he does perform the title track, All Things Must Pass. So, um, you know, in general, I like to hear a bit more of when, what the solo Beatles thought thought of each other's work, but certainly in the early 70s I think they were too busy trying to uh, establish their own identity that they didn't sort of stop to say, hey, George's album is brilliant. Well, maybe Ringo did. Ringo, Ringo probably did. So, nice packaging. Um, you, get a, you get a poster of George looking very moody in his uh, Henley home. The window in the background. You get the musicians listed here, uh, which contains all four members of Badfinger, uh, Leon Russell, Gary Wright, Klaus Vorman, uh, Jim Gordon, various other people, most of Derek and the Dominoes. Eric Clapton's on here, but he doesn't get credited, interestingly enough, because I don't think they wanted to pay royalties to uh, Eric's record company or something. So on the reissue in 2001, they acknowledged that Eric was on most of this. And then here, here we've got the lyrics, and uh, I like this design on the, uh, the orange apple. I think one of them made a joke, I think it was George, uh, made a joke that the reason the, reason the big Beatles split up is uh, Paul wanted the apple to be green, John wanted it to be white, I wanted it to be orange, and Ringo wanted it to be blue. There's a bit of a flippant comment, but I, I think there's a little bit of truth in it. And uh, it's kind of metaphoric of what, what actually happened. That they just went their separate ways for the right reasons, I think, on the whole. So, back to the album. Uh, I'm going to review just, just the, the first four sides, because the, the size five and six is an apple jam, which is a largely uh, forgettable um, album of instrumentals. So it opens with I'd Have You Any Time, which is a Harrison Dillon composition. And um, I don't actually know who wrote which bits, uh, but it, it'd be nice to hear a, a demo of them doing it together, which I don't think I've heard. Um, but it's a very haunting melody and a very haunting uh, lyric as well, not to mention the guitar uh, all the way through, really. Nice acoustic and nice lead. I, I think it's probably Eric playing the lead, but I don't know if it could be Eric or George. Um, and then we've got the type, the sorry, not title track, the single "My Sweet Lord." Uh, just great, great production from Phil Spector actually. Uh, this album and the wall of sound is very much in evidence. He's got about two hundred acoustic guitars playing on this track to great effect, and the way the drums come in from Ringo, getting louder and louder, is just brilliant. And then all building up to the "I really want to see you." I uh, really want to be with you, and then the glorious guitar solo in the middle, just a gem of a single, and you can see why it got to number one for weeks and weeks. Um, unfortunately later it was deemed to be too, too similar to uh, a song called He's So Fine, so he got into trouble, but at the time, uh, at the time, I don't think too many people said that, although maybe they did. But anyway, George, I know John thought that he walked into it, and you should have realised that it was too similar, but it doesn't really matter. Music belongs to everyone at the end of the day. And this is a better song than he's so fine, in my opinion. 
a lot, lot better feel to it and a better, more moving lyric. Um, Wah Wah is next and was written by George when he left the Letter B sessions in 1969 and just went home and wrote the song Wah Wah, you're giving me a Wah Wah and I'm thinking of you and all the things we used to do. Uh, maybe a little bit aimed at Paul, but uh, probably aimed at the whole band. I think he was just fed up with uh, being in the band at that stage. And um, it rocks along nicely. It's not the best song ever in terms of uh, songwriting, but it's uh, got good guitar, good bass from Klaus Foreman, if you can hear it, behind the wall of sound, and good, good drumming from Ringo and a couple of other people. So nice, Isn't It a Pity is, is uh, a very strong closer to side one. Um, brilliant melody, very interesting chord changes. I think Jeff Lynn has, uh, has remarked on this, how uh, unusual George's chords are. And this song is a good example of that. It's a great melody, great production, and brilliant drum entry from Ringo. And nice cello, nice strings. My only criticism, and it's a small one, is it probably goes on a bit too long. And uh, I don't know if it's deliberately trying to sound like Hey Jude at the end, but it does sound like Hey Jude in the end, and uh, it's a little bit annoying towards the end. So probably should have been a four minute song as opposed to a whatever it is, near a six probably. So side two opens with What Is Life, which was a single not in Britain, but I think it was a hit in various other countries, and it's pretty catchy, nice guitar riff. Um, I think this song is a little bit overrated, possibly. Uh, I like it, but I don't think it's an all-time classic. Uh, the words are okay. The tune is, uh, as I say, catchy, commercial. Um, and the horn is a nice production. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. It's a good track. It's a good track. Um, if Not For You, which is next, which is a Dylan cover. Um, it's a brilliant song. It was on New Morning, I think before this album came out. And I prefer George's version. It's a better, nicer production, warmer feel to it. Um, brings out the melody more, I think. Um, someone's playing harmonica on this track, but I don't think he's doing And then uh, this leads nicely into another great ballad, Behind That Locked Door. Another sublime melody from George. I mean, he'd been storing up these songs throughout the last few years of the Beatles, struggling to get airtime on from Pepper onwards, White Album, he only got four songs out of 30, and Abbey Road, he only got two, Let It Be, he only got two. So he had 15 songs or so just sitting in the, waiting to be recorded, and uh, it all, they all came out on this album, and it was quite a surprise to many people at the time, although I only got into this, I only bought this album later on in the late 70s, but uh, I, I can imagine at the time it must have been I knew George was good, but I didn't know he was that good because, you know, here comes the son of something. I mean, there's, it's just two songs, isn't it? And then this is a four, four sides of just brilliance for the most part. Um, let it down. Uh, by, by the way, Behind That Locked Door, I think, is about Dylan, or people say it's about Dylan. Could be. Um, let It Down, the next track. <laughs> Pun not intended, but I think it lets it, lets it side two down. Uh, I don't like it much. I think it's overproduced, I think it's too noisy, drums are too loud, the lyrics are a little bit ponderous, the melody is not good. I don't like this track. Sorry, I don't like it. But the next track, Run of the Mill, is probably my favourite on the whole album. It's a, it's a sublime melody and it's a great set of words. And again, I don't know who he's, um, who he's talking to, but... Uh, I may decide to get out with your blessing while I carry on guessing how high will you leap? Will you make enough for you to reap it? Only you'll arrive at your own made end without no one but yourself to be offended. It's you that decides. Well, it could be aimed at Paul, it could be aimed at any number of people, or maybe it's just aimed at the negative side of the human spirit, I don't know. But it's a really nice song and uh, great production again from Phil. Great acoustic playing from George, nice horns, and again, brilliant melody. So side three, Beware of Darkness, it's another gem. Could have been on Abbey Road, or if the Beatles had stayed together, no doubt it would have been a big Beatles track. As it is, it's a big George track, and uh, 
I just love this track. I can't say anything bad about it, and I can say a lot of good things. It's just brilliant words. Beware of Maya, beware of darkness. Um, it's about, you know, not being selfish and thinking of other people and, you know, a bit of, bit of song about, it doesn't quite say what Dylan says, don't follow leaders, watch your parking meters, but it's uh, got a bit of a dig at uh, political leaders in it. So brilliant song, and great guitar solo, great guitar solo. Apple Scruffs is next, uh, which was written about the fans who used to hang around outside the Apple building day in, day out, and I uh, used to meet George when he came out at 7 o'clock in the morning after a recording session. And one, one day he just invited them all in and said, listen to the song, I've recorded it for you, which must have been quite a special occasion for those Apple Scruffs. And it's a very moving tune, nice harmonica, nice touching words, very heartfelt. Ballad is fun, so Frankie Crisp is next, another lovely melody, nice piano. Uh, a little bit overrated. This track made a recent George compilation ahead of some of some other songs on this album, which I was a bit surprised by. But it's a good song. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, Awaiting on you all. Uh, again, a bit noisy. Um, not my favourite. A bit overproduced from Phil by Phil. Um, Kind of religious words, but not not that moving really, and not not his best lyric. Um, it's okay. All things must pass. The title track. Uh, I think Mike Scott of the Waterboys said this was his favourite track of all time, and it's it's one of my favourite tracks of all time. I think it's just very simple it, it, melodically, and really nice words. Sunrise doesn't last all morning, a cloudburst doesn't last all day. It seems my love is up and has left you with no warning. It's not always going to be this grey. All things must pass. All things must pass away. So it could be about the Beatles splitting. It could be about someone passing away, literally. I don't know, but it kind of, that song, it could fit any number of scenarios and it's very moving and it's actually quite uplifting at the end of the day. Side four opens with I Dig Love, uh, which is a very amusing song, mainly based on, the, on this little piano riff that he has going. Very simple words, but very effective, um, and I love it. Uh, the Art of Dying is another slightly noisy, overproduced track. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Isn't It a Pity has a reprise on, on side four, which I think is a bit pointless, to be honest much prefer the, the side one version. But then side four finishes with Hear Me Lord, which uh, closes the album, the album proper in great style. Great melody, great religious words, very uplifting tune, good drumming. Play this album loud, and uh, apart from on, on those couple of tracks which I said maybe get a little bit too loud, it's, uh, on the whole, it's a very well-produced album. I don't think Phil Spector overdid it too much. On a couple of tracks he did, but then on other tracks like If Not For You and Beware Of Darkness and Run Of The Mill and Hear Me Lord, I Dig Love, he's just spot on. So eight out of ten times he gets it right. Um, and song-wise, I'm, I'm going to judge this album as I say, just on the four sides of proper songs. And it's a 10 out of 10. So thank you for watching. See you next time.